she doesn't even look into a mirror as an actor and that's very impressive she for was me. willing to go there too absolutely and you don't want to preach to the converted i don't yes right and i've been able to now talk to my parents about you know this is what i go through can i get help in this survey 81% of the respondents feel that artists can be very strong advocates for mental yes, health yes. there's a song you feel sad to there's a song you feel happy yeah. you know with and you want to Gauri, it's such a pleasure to have you on Film Companion. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. This is a special show we do in collaboration with ITC Fiamma, and the idea is to talk about mental health and the movies. So they do a survey. It's called Feel Good with Fiamma Mental Wellbeing Survey, wow. and in that, seventy-nine percent of the respondents felt that cinema can go a long way in. addressing the stigma around mental health if there is a positive portrayal and i think yes. you've played a really key part in this with dear zindagi in 2016 i want to start by just asking you in the 7 years since <laughs> what is your sense of the impact of that film because it was so unusual it was a singular film in terms of the way it dealt with mental health and what you said in that movie what is the feedback from gen z from millennials what have you seen actually quite um, gratifying surprising at times and sort of goosebumpy also yeah. i've had those variations so uh, as usual i had no idea and hoping i mean you know as a storyteller that this makes sense to people and it kind of reaches where you wanted it to reach and uh, in the beginning itself i mean i got emails and i'm going to be randomly answering this but from psychologists and which was like a big eye opener saying thank you for making this film because it's been so difficult for us to convince people how important and critical looking after men mental health is to so just be able to take it seriously to reach out for help and a thank you from that community of doctors was a big uh, was a big thing yeah. and i wasn't expecting that i mean i thought it would be the audience and regular people who would react to it and gen z yes i mean the most of the people a certain age group it's like oh we love english english and you know kind of but i'm always interested in someone who people who come up to me and say i love dear zindagi it's my favorite film and a lot of young people have come up to me i mean written, whatever reached out and told me how it's really impacted their lives and like these are real stories and um it's like oh this was my story and you were talking about this and i relate to this this is what i've been through and i have not known what to do and i've been able to now talk to my parents about you know this is what i go through can i get help so those things those little changes that they could bring about i didn't even realize how difficult it is to just understand that you're going through something and to be able to even express it yeah. i mean i for one have taken that bit a little bit for granted because i've been in therapy i've tried different things and i've been quite open about it i mean within my circle and in my life but to realize that people young people are not even able to realize that there's something in them that needs articulated not yeah. articulated absolutely yeah. Yeah. so and so much resistance from parents and families as to come on you're just in a bad mood yeah you know to be dismissed off and there's no opening or platform so i think somewhere this helped and the the one more example recently and which was strange like you said since 7 years this was balki was at uh, if film festival this guy got up in the audience and i want you to uh, convey my message to gauri that my brother's been in depression had been in depression for many years and uh, he didn't seek help of course and i forced him to watch dear zindagi which he was resistant to initially and then he watched it and then he watched it and he rewatched it wow. and he felt better by just watching it mm. and he was now ready saying oh god i understand you know and then he's reached out for help so f- this i mean i get goosebumps yeah. you know even now narrating this and i was like you know how ten wonderful 10 people yeah also it makes a difference to you know sort of it's yeah. i've uh, you know it's a job well done it is no absolutely intention uh, well you know yeah yeah you know as i was uh, rewatching it um i was thinking of how of course now 
Shah Rukh has sort of reinvented himself as the great action hero <laughs> and we love it. We're all applauding. Yeah. But it was also so nice to see him as yeah. Jan, the psychologist, you know, sort of giving life advice with this incredible <laughs> combination of charm and gravitas. Yeah. Uh, so unusual, but what also struck me, Gauri, was Kaira, the Alia Bhatt character, how prickly she was. Mm. She's not always likable, yeah. you know, and that's not something Hindi film heroines do. They're always yeah. supposed to be likable and, and attractive yeah. and, and, and she's not. And yeah. I wanted to ask you, what were the conversations you had with your writers about how far you can push the envelope with that? See, because in, in so personal a story, I don't mean that all the events are mine, but uh, because I have felt so deeply about this and it actually came from an experience of having been through this. So it's not like I had to research it, but you know, it was just life, yeah. you know, life experience. And uh, for me, um, you know, uh, and my writers were supporting me in this, but you know, I was leading this because this was my story to tell. I mean, great credit to them, uh, not taking that away, but to push, I had to push them myself and the entire story into, let me you know, go to the edge. Let me just do, expose this, expose the insides of me and this character as much as I can. Take that risk of feeling naked, you know, about your feelings and about what you go through. So that was that, and like you rightly said, not likable. And not always looking the best, you yeah. know. And Alia is fantastic, I mean, just going off topic, but she doesn't even look into a mirror as an actor and that's very impressive She was willing me. to go there too. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not my lipstick, it's right, my makeup. She didn't care, hair, nothing. And that for me was great. You are this person, you yeah. know, just at a physical level where you're not interested in that, but you've just gotten into that space. And um, what did you mean by push the envelope? Sorry, meaning, I've just meaning got like that. how, how do you, you know, because finally it is a Hindi film, yeah, right? It's a yeah. mainstream Hindi yeah, film with yeah, big stars, yeah. right? So you always have to worry ki, kitna, yeah, yeah, kitna yeah, experiment yeah. kar sakte hai, right? Did you have those conversations? No, of course, of course, you're absolutely right because, yeah, it's finally, not just in the cinema, yes, India, and I definitely wanted this for India yeah. and for us because everywhere else in the West is quite... Uh, it's a known fact. And you don't want to preach to the converted. I know, yes. Right. Absolutely. You're trying to reach out to the people who don't understand. Absolutely. You so know? this was very much for our So it's country. a balancing act. Yeah. So, yes, I didn't want her to, in some way, I'm not being entirely conservative or anything, but maybe that's also who I am. Which is not this, yes, it's a wild person and it's, it's you know, someone who's like, uh, you know, her thoughts are all over and she's not being conserved in terms of having relationships. She's not that person. She's liberal. She comes from a decently liberal background. And I needed those things also for her to have that playing field mm. for herself. And yes, I think somewhere a subtle uh, sort of boundary, but I wouldn't call it boundary of you know, I don't want to distract it by making a character something over the right. top because this is more important. Yeah. The subject's more important. So I want to focus on that and making her this crazy cigarette smoking person or something, for sure. example. Sure, anything that will alienate too Alien much. Yes. Yeah. So I wanted yeah. it to like, like parents should think, oh, this could be, you know, or yeah. I didn't want anyone to say, and usually that can happen, this very judgmental view of, oh, wo to cigarette is a cigarette. Yeah, so, wo, ye to hona hi tha. Ye to hona hi tha. so right. I didn't want that. So yeah. I wanted to be safe with a little bit of that subtlety, yeah. that little thin line. It is it is such a thin line. And you're not just, you know, you're not just creating this character. You're also, it's a format of storytelling, yeah. right? Yeah. With mainstream yeah. Yeah. Hindi cinema. So there are songs, uh, right? <laughs> Including the very popular Love You Zindagi. There is a touch of humor. Mm. Uh, how do you balance that when your core intent is... The messaging that you're yeah. normalizing seeking therapy, yeah. that you're yeah. saying it's okay to say I have trouble. Yeah. How did you find that balance? Well, of course, I was trying to capture a very fragile um, story as opposed to a regular story. Yeah. So it is a very fragile topic. But for me, again, I mean, even as an audience or a storyteller, it has to be watchable. Yeah. I was not. I it's not a lecture. It's not a lecture. It's not esoterics falling in the cat. I, esoteric film festival cinema with no uh, disrespect to that yeah but a topic like this required a larger audience to make a larger impact and not just for like you said the converted yeah. who already are aware and that's the bunch of intellectual audience that is watching it 
So for me also to tell a story like this needed to be watchable, entertaining, light as well because that's how life is. It's not just tragic note mm. that you follow at all times. And uh, fun and songs are part of our life so much, especially as Indians. We need a background score in our head even without film. <laughs> you know, there's a song you feel sad to, there's a song you feel happy, yeah. you know, with and you want to... So music is very essential, very key. Is it hard though, Gauri, to... When you're, you're very clear that this is the messaging, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, do you then figure out that the plot is this, this is the messaging, how do we mold, like what comes first? Is it always the art above the message? Is it the storytelling above the message? How do you work that? Yes, storytelling is key because I am telling a story so that and it needs to appeal to people and if a message can come through it, great. So I start with what the story is and I just had this idea of a therapist and a patient because I thought that uh, interesting because I've had that experience and I always was aspiring to sort of have a therapist and I kind of found that person uh, in my life and I thought this would be great, you know, and if someone would do this and, you know, sort of create a little more flexibility in therapy. So it's my ideal uh, relationship, idea. therapist. Uh, yeah, an ideal yeah. idea of therapy itself, where they yeah. walk on a beach and you know, you can sort of open out from that couch and that room. Yeah. So it was my fantasy slash imagination. And sometimes I think people may be doing it. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, so it, it started with that thought that, oh, how can I, you know, sort of describe this beautiful relationship? Yeah, because... Finally, a therapist speaking to someone or listening to someone yeah. is not visually engaging, yeah. right? Yeah. Though you solve that by making his office really kick ass. <laughs> it was a yeah. very interesting yeah. office yeah. Yeah. with lots of things to look at. Yeah. But then, of course, by also taking it out. Yeah. Uh, and is that something, Gauri, that you researched and that you know happens or that was just wishful that I want this to happen? I want this to happen, more or less. And also sometimes therapists, not in the clinical, very um, uh, sort of formatted kind of therapy, but you have like a friend or an elder or, you know, someone, a mentor. And you can still derive that kind of sense of support. Yeah. And that could happen in this manner. So sometimes when you don't really have a therapist or access it could be someone who could mentor you, support you, guide you. So then the playing field is, is I mean, you know, larger. And which is why these circumstances, these situations can happen. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah and of course, it's wishful. <laughs> yeah. Listen, the master stroke, though, is casting Shah Rukh. It's <laughs> okay. fun. <laughs> because, because, yeah, yeah. Gauri, we trust him already. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the minute we see him on screen, we trust him and yeah. we know that he will have our best interests yeah. at heart yeah. and that he can do no wrong. What was your brief to him? Oh, just do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, luckily for me, uh, you know, when I went to him with these four or five lines, I mean, I had a uh, script ready anyway, but um, I don't know, I narrated it to him and he said, OK, what do I have to do? And that was it. And he got it. I mean, of course, we discussed a lot like what is, what kind of a person we, you know, therapist we wanted him to be. And he had his own inputs and can I be this? So we explored that. But the brief is essentially what's in the script. Hmm. This is this person, light, uh, humorous, you know, um, kind of like what Shah Rukh is in real life where you sort of trust him. Like I said, you just believe him. I mean, I can't think of anyone else who could have played Jahangir Khan. I mean, because of him, people have, you know, sort of taken therapy a bit seriously because I needed a mainstream actor and a star apart from him being awesome and a great actor and believe everything, you know, love. I mean, you want to listen to him. When he says words, you want to listen. Yeah. So apart from that quality, those qualities that he has and he's Shah Rukh Khan and I love him and everything, that star quality was very essential for this film so that more people watch it's more accessible and this this idea of you know sort of therapy mental health gets through if again it was not someone like him it may not have uh, reached out this this uh, yeah. idea of therapy did you have a backup plan no <laughs> 
<laughs> not at all <laughs> and he was the first person i went to he's the person i said let me aim high yeah why not and then i'll see but this is what i want i aimed for the stars i mean literally and figuratively and i went to him and he said yes so it, it, it how was amazing great. yeah how amazing yeah. Yeah. you know it's also interesting because in this survey 81% of the respondents feel that artists can be very strong advocates for yes, mental health yes. and you know that's I mean, the line yeah yeah i should have used that but you artists can yeah absolutely hai na and, yeah. and in one one line that's that's exactly what uh, the because the relationship already is built in yeah. and that's of course on screen but also off i mean how much impact do you think like dipika going yeah. public with depression yeah. how much impact do you think that had absolutely no i think that that is huge and yeah. i think she was like the first one right yes absolutely yes. like someone of that stature exactly absolutely and i think any of that all of it really really helps someone of I mean, you're imagining her life must be uh, you know fairy tale yeah. and she must be like wow she has everything she's so gorgeous she's successful and you imagine that it you know she must be so happy in her life what's her problem but if you realize someone like that can have an issue it just becomes it becomes such a uniting thing that yeah. we all can go through this yeah. and it, it's fine you know what was fascinating for me on the rewatch was that you put one of the key messages in the film you left that to the house help alka <laughs> right she says that if doctors like this exist phir to sabko jana chahiye and i yeah. thought that was amazing why did you make that choice because see you don't need to be literate or educated in the schooling kind of way to really understand people and life and emotions and she at her innocent from her innocent space has said oh then that, you know it's as simple as that but at a simplistic level for any human being to just understand that we all have issues and she's someone like sometimes you just very deep you know deep thoughts coming from the most unexpected corner yeah. you know and, and that happens yeah. so simply put that yeah. and and it made so much sense yeah that yeah. if such people exist yes. then we all need them all need that yeah. you know yeah. it was just like a yeah. a throwaway <laughs> line that just captured yeah. everything tell me why do you think hindi cinema has and not just hindi i would say indian cinema at large the treatment of mental health has been very uh, you know it's either fodder for like comedy mm. or horror mm. you know this very extreme idea of what it is traditionally that's how we've dealt with mm. it until literally a few years ago yeah, you yeah, know there's yeah. one two stray moments yeah, yeah. where we've kind yeah. of come to it with some level of understanding and progressive thinking yeah. why do you think traditionally it's been such a is it just because everyone's a little afraid i don't know you'd have to ask them because i've i've not understood that at all i mean it's defeating the whole purpose yeah. you know it's better not to talk about it exactly. than saying these uh, wrong things but i think this was also their idea that this could be therapy i'm sure nobody experienced it themselves mm. when they were doing this it's yeah. just um a spoofy idea of what this could mean or even dismissing therapy altogether that this is like pagal logo ka ha huh, it was always and pagal, pagal was fun. a use a, you know usage yeah, yeah. of this word itself was you yeah. know like uh, that's what it meant it's only those few people that 3% who are mad would require this i think it comes from that very perception this very um, non aware uh, perception of therapy in mental health itself forget therapy mm. uh, that it's only mad people and you know sort of like pariahs right. have this i think so the non knowledge of it i think it has led to this very <laughs> strange depiction yeah yeah, yeah yeah but in in the years since dear zindagi do you see an evolution in the way that uh, the entertainment ecosystem is looking at mental health definitely definitely i mean i mean i see a lot of lot of change mm. i mean i don't know if it is entirely dear zindagi or you know like just somehow i mean at least in india i'd like to believe that it made some difference yeah. and there's so much more talk around it and there's uh, so many more discussions so many more people now uh, sort of openly uh, you know sort of admitting sharing 
that uh, you know it's okay with different kind of disorders and it doesn't have to be one so there even the awareness of uh, specific disorders and you know the kinds of mental issues are also coming to the fore which is interesting yeah and yes of course i must give credit to dipika also for having you know sort of uh, shared that you know uh, in in the survey about 82% of the respondents felt that streaming and television can also play the same yeah. role like yeah. movies have yeah. but what do you think is key to the right and sensitive depiction like as a creator as a storyteller what should people do before they embark on this journey of like telling a story around this i think to know before you tell research it. yeah like get yeah, experience it or research i don't really like that word since advertising days <laughs> research you know, it feels too academic yeah because also maybe because i'm too limited um, in terms of i tell what i know i say what i know. i mean i tell stories you know that i i know what i'm saying yeah and maybe something else i wouldn't be able to if there was a ramanujan film like i'm so poor in math there's no way i can i mean i'd have to research and that become boring for me right. so anything i'd have to research itself like a part of it like i did research one bit of donna paula in goa and where this you know that bit hmm. but as the a, facts the facts yeah. but as a story i'm very anti research hmm. so uh, but if someone wants to still i would say no what you saying before you say it and is there a right and wrong depiction i mean the pagal kind is the wrong depiction <laughs> for <course>. sure <laughs> i mean there is no yes, other absolutely. word for it but wrong very wrong yeah but no i think there can be different takes on this and that would be interesting if you know there are yeah yeah and do you feel like in, even in terms of just the business ecosystem i mean of course you you it was co-produced by karan johar yeah. it was like the best set up for a project yeah, yeah, like this he's absolutely. also a very progressive thinker you know so but for for other people who are trying to tell stories like this do you think that the money men the people who are signing the checks yeah. are also more receptive now, now as opposed now. to yeah because I, social changes have happened yes, yes no of course they would be whenever there's an example that's set and then you know it has been decently successful yeah. and has made an impact you you know the more stories can be told so yeah. someone pays like even after english english you know women in sarees and in their 40s you know could actually aspire to have and people were a little more receptive to making films with i mean women centric films and you know it didn't have to be 20 somethings and just you know sort of looking pretty yeah so it does i mean so many other works i mean i'm only talking about myself because that's all like in so yes there's always some yardstick and then it just kind of opens up stuff or nudges the door open a little yeah, bit yeah 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 well thank you for doing that and before i let you go i have to ask what's next for you <laughs> i know you you emphasized on the 7 years <laughs> which is going to be on 25th november and it's been very long but i'm writing very um, uh, what do you say ferociously literally yeah oh, lovely yeah yeah i'm i'm desperate actually now to tell this story So, and what we, we you can't tell us anything. Ah, uh, so even with Dears in the end, never had a two-liner. It was only in my head, and I never write a synopsis until. I mean, I do write my own two-liner to understand what I'm doing, but I'm never able to share it somehow until there's something. It's formed. baked more. Yeah, yeah. But yes, another again. personal a uh, personal story personal as in when i say personal it doesn't mean uh, it's an autobiography but uh, human relationship drama that's that's a genre <laughs> i know <laughs> i'm just interested so much in the detail of human connection yeah. connections and relationships I'm, i'm stuck there i guess that's my recurring theme <laughs> how lovely <laughs> we like that you're stuck there gauri thank you so much thank you thank you arubha always a pleasure what can you tell me off camera 